Hi friends, welcome back to Arc Tutorials. This is Angular testing tutorials for beginners. We are trying to cover different frameworks here, Jasmine, Karma, Protractor, and Cucumber in detail from scratch to advanced. This is part four of the series, and today we'll show you how to run E2E test and what do you mean by E2E test? How do you run it? What are the different options? You'll learn all about it in today's episode. Before we do that, let me inform you that there are other tutorial series in the channel that I've created for you to learn and master Angular. There's Angular 9 full tutorial series, there's Angular CRUD series, and this is the Angular testing series. If you're, if you're looking for learning Angular, these are the series and these are the playlist that's there in the description box. All right, so to test any Angular application, we'll obviously need a sample project. So as part of Angular CRUD tutorial series, I've covered and created a project, which is what we are using in our Angular testing series. You can download the link from the GitHub link that I've given in the description box. Also as part of the part one of this particular series, I've shown you how to set up the sample project in your local. So if you are really looking uh, or if you have any issues or doubts, just refer to the episode number one, where I've shown you how to get the application up and running in your local. All right, so let's talk about the focus of today's um, uh, episode, which is running E2E tests, right? So what do you mean by E2E test? Now, this is a first question that is often asked in interviews also, like what do you mean by E2E tests? So E2E test means automating the application's workflow for a functionality end-to-end, -end, right? Now, usually uh, what happens is if you do unit testing, you'll, your focus is on the smallest granular pieces of application. Like, for example, testing a component. You'll check whether the link is there, you'll check whether the currency is there, etc. But as part of end-to-end -end scripts, we'll check on the bigger picture of the application. That is, launch this particular URL, you should be able to see data, you should be able to click on add new product, add a product, then go to dashboard, etc. So you'll cover multiple screens as part of your E2E testing. Angular has support for testing end-to-end -end tests using Protractor. So Protractor is the default end-to-end -end framework that's used for end-to-end -end tests. Now we can also use other frameworks like Zest, Mocha, or Cucumber to run and write our end-to-end -end scripts. So now Protractor comes with some default parameters that it takes to run the end-to-end -end tests but we can always configure them in the config file. And I'll show you how, where and how to do that. Uh, let's first learn how to run our end-to-end -end scripts, right? So to do that, we'll run the command ng space e2e, right? e2e stands for end-to-end. -end. So you're running that, it would run and give you the report. Let's see that first, and then I'll talk about the details of where and how you can configure the defaults. So open your application. And what we'll do, we'll write ng space e2e command to run our end-to-end. -end. Hit enter. All right, so let's give it a minute for it to run. And once it's done, it will give you the report. In the meanwhile, hit the like button if you're liking the tutorial. All right, let's give it a couple of minutes. Okay, so it's now running the scripts. It will open up the runner and it would show you the output. So you see it has executed and it said it executed one of one spec and one has failed, right? That's the report of this particular application so far, but we will write some more tests and we will get it working. We'll fix these issues. So let's see where it is. So if you are following the tutorial, let me make some quick notes for you e2e tests right now here the first thing that you should see is the all the end-to-end -end test scripts are located in the e2e folder right unlike unlike the unit testing files which are right there in your source app like if you open orders list orders you'll see the spec file here which is your unit test e2e will be under the e2e folder here and you see Anything that's ending with e2e hyphen spec dot ts is means it's an end to end file, right? So it would be ending with hyphen e2e hyphen spec dot ts, right? 
So that's the extension or, or rather the file ending with that prefix. All right, so this means it's an end-to-end -end test. Uh, it's found under the E2E folder. Now to run, we are running ng-E2E, right? So it would give us the report, give report of tests passed and failed, okay? We'll, we'll fix them, don't worry about the failures just yet. It's too early. And remember to, to change the default configs, right? So we can either pass through params, right? So if you see, we can pass various params like base, href, deploy, href, url, and all these things which are required from deployment perspective, right? So we will do that deployment testing also, but just know now that whenever you have these things, you can pass, like for example, if you want to generate an output and you want to pass, say, base href, so you can pass something like this, localhost, or whatever portal you have, right? Um, so you can you can mention the base href you can mention the deploy href oh sorry it's base href oh sorry it's base url sorry right so these are some of the details uh, we can pass but remember that um, it's in dev server so it won't take but I'll, I'll cover that later but understand here are the defaults that you need to configure so if you see here by default the base href url is localhost 4200 right but you can configure it and you can change it here or you can pass it as a parameter both of which are fine right so we will learn this as we graduate uh, gradually go into the coding side of it where we will do hands-on examples we will learn how to skip some files right so this is it says execute all star dot e2e spec.ts which means execute all the files which are there in this particular folder in the e2e but if you want some specific one, you can say just run app.e2e. So I'm just mentioning that run only this particular spec file, right? So there are different configurations, various things that you can easily configure in this particular file, which will help us to run, right? We'll learn about it when we start writing our spec files. Uh, it's too early uh, it's since we are in the beginning phases of the tutorial series. I'm just going easy so that you learn the basics and the fundamentals first. So the fundamentals are simple. We'll run ng-e2e and then to see the report, once you run, you can see the report right here. We can also mention the code coverage that we want. We can generate that as well. Understand that whenever you see .e2e-spec.ts file, it means it's an end-to-end -end testing test script file. It would run and give you the report right here. And we can also change the configurations in the protractor.conf.js file right to change the default config we go to protractor.conf.js file right so go through this do not worry too much about uh, what the options are and what values to go in we will put all the values we will configure it we'll change them as we progress in the series all right so that's all i will have for today uh, in the next episode i'll show you how to do code coverage and then we will also talk about configuration and then we start our hands on writing scripts and fixing the component service and all that the details in detail. Thank you so much for joining. I hope you're enjoying the quick series on this Angular testing. If you have any doubts, just drop them in the comment section. I'll be happy to help you and answer them. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. I'll see you in the next episode where we will generate test code coverage. Thank you so much.